In the last lecture, we learned how to use props, how to receive them as an argument and output them dynamically in our code. Now I also want to output whatever we pass between the opening and closing tag of our custom component. And this is actually super simple too. There is a special prop we can access, React gives us access to it to be precise. In the person component where we want to receive it in the end, I will wrap my paragraph in normal parentheses so that I can write this over multiple lines because I now also want to create a wrapping element, simply a div, and I want to wrap the paragraph inside of this div and also add another element after this paragraph. This other element should also be a paragraph maybe, but it should be a paragraph which outputs this part we pass in between. We can simply do that by using single curly braces to output something dynamic, accessing props, and then here the special children property. This is a reserved word. We didn't pass anything as children on our persons. We only pass name and age. Children refers to any elements, and this includes plain text as we have it here, between the opening and closing tag of our component. And you could nest complex HTML code in between two. This doesn't have to be just text. Could be an unordered list with multiple list items. Could be other React components. Anything can go between here. And these children are now output with this syntax. Of course, you don't have to wrap it in a paragraph. You can use it anywhere in your JSX code. And after saving this, we see my hobbies racing for menu, whereas Max and Stephanie still output the other content only because there we don't pass any children. If we inspect it, we see that an empty paragraph is rendered though. So the paragraph is there, it's just empty because props children is basically undefined, is null, because we have nothing between opening and closing tag. This is important to know, you can put your content into your component from outside, not only by passing props like this, but if you want to pass some structured HTML content, also by placing it between the opening and closing tag and accessing it with props children. In the last lectures, we had a look at props. Props, simply an object giving us access to all the attributes we pass to our own components. Now, sometimes you don't want to get some information from outside, but you want to have it inside a component and change it from inside there too. So for example, here in our app.js file, let's say we also want to add a button, which if we click it, simply switches one of the names we use here. So where we simply put a caption of switch name maybe. Well, we'll come to handling this click event in the next lectures. But first of all, we need to define these names here in a non-hard coded way. Right now it's hard coded into our JSX code and this is okay here, but if we later want to change it, we have to store it in some variable or something like that. Well, this actually is a class and a class has properties. This is not just the case in JavaScript, but in other programming languages too. You can kind of think of a property as a variable of a class. So in normal JavaScript code, you would simply write var something equals some value. This doesn't work in a class. There, you can simply write something equals some value. So a bit shorter, but in the end, the same you could say. There's one special property you can define in any component which extends component. So you can't do it in person. You can't define properties here anyways, because that's a normal function. So here you would have to use some constants or some variables. Still, what we're about to do 
only works in components which are created by extending component. There we can define a special property named state. Whereas props are set and passed from outside, like name and age into the person component, state is managed from inside a component and state is only available in components which are used by extending component which is imported from React. It's not available in function components. Still, you should use function components as often as possible because you should use state with care. Because having state in all your components and manipulating it from anywhere in your app makes your app quickly unpredictable and hard to manage, especially as it grows. Of course, it doesn't mean you shouldn't use it at all though. Here it makes perfect sense. We initialize it by assigning a value. And this value is a JavaScript object. Again, this is a reserved word and we should use it if we want to manage, well, some component internal data, you should say. So now the state could have some persons. This is totally up to you. I simply create a persons property in this JavaScript object. And this will be an array. And you can set up any kind of data you want in this state object. You could set up a name property, which is some name. You can really manage whatever you want. Here, I want to manage an array of persons though. Now, this persons array, again, is an array of JavaScript objects where each object has a name, maybe max, and an age, maybe 28. A number here, not a string. Unlike down there, where we do pass a string but the number is fine for me here. I also want to have another one here, name menu and age 29, and a third one, you guessed it, for Stephanie, which has an age of 26. Now, this is my state. We can now access a property like this, and that's not just true for state, but for any property. In our render method, by simply outputting something dynamic with single curly braces as you learned it. And then the this keyword. This refers to the class due to our ES6 syntax we're using. And on our class, we have a render method we could call. We shouldn't do that though, React does that. But we have a state property. And as I said, you can also define your own properties, but state is a special one as you will learn over the next lectures. So here we can then access this state and on state, my person's array, there may be the first element by using index zero and then the name. So instead of hard coding it, I'm now accessing this property in this object here in the person's array on the state property. Now I'll copy this code here and replace my age with it too. There, I of course want to access the age property. And I'll replicate this for menu, but here it's of course the first element, uh, the second element with index one in this array. And for the age, I'll also access element one and of course the age property. And for Stephanie, you probably guessed that index two and also for the age, index two and age property. With that, if we save this and we go back to the application, we see the button which doesn't do anything and we see the same output as before. This time using a property, the state property though. Now, I said state would be a special property. Thus far, we don't use it in a special way though. We can change this. State can be changed and if it changes, and that's the special thing about it and it only works on that state property, if it changes, it will lead React to re-render our DOM or to update the DOM, I should say. So if we change the name of Maxi, for example, this will lead to this being re-rendered. And let me prove it to you by also showing you how to listen to events like clicking on this button. In the last lecture, 
We set up state and I told you that it would be special, but we don't really see that yet. All we do right now is manage our data there and then access it in our JSX code in the app.js file. Let's now handle a click on this button. We do this by adding on click. Now this is important. In normal JavaScript and normal HTML to be precise, it would be on click with a lowercase c. Now in JSX, and that is really important, it's on click with a capital C. Still, we then assign as a value the code we want to execute upon a click. And there we can use curly braces to execute some dynamic code. Now, typically, you want to execute a function of your class, a so-called method there. And it is a convention to give this a name like the following. Switch name handler, maybe. Now, the first part, switch name, it is totally up to you. But you typically use handler here to indicate that this is a method you're not actively calling, but you're assigning as an event handler. It's not required to follow this pattern, though. You can name this whatever you want, of course. It is a good practice to name it like this, though. So switch name handler now should be a function. Now, if we just said equal, right now it is just the same syntax as for the state property. But if we assign a function as a value here, it becomes a method, basically. It still is a property, you could say, but a property which holds a function which can be executed. Here, I'll also use the ES6 arrow function. Keep in mind, this is just a normal function in the end. And there, I now want to edit my state. Well, before we, before we do this, let's see if we can call this successfully. I will say console log was clicked so that we can see something in the console once this was clicked. And I will go to my click listener and between the curly braces, I can now run this switch name handler and don't add parentheses. Don't do this. This would execute it immediately once React renders this to the DOM because you execute this function with the parentheses. We only want to pass a reference and we do this by using this and then referring to that property which holds a function. Important, if you don't use the this syntax here basically where you assign a function to a property you could say, you will run into errors if you try to use this, as we will soon do, in this switch name handler function, because this will then not refer to the class at runtime, simply to how to this works in ES5 JavaScript. By using this ES6 syntax, we circumvent this problem, which will become important later. For now important, don't add parentheses here, just pass a reference to this function. With that, let's save this file and let's now open the console in the developer tools and click switch name. And you should see was clicked in your developer tools here. Now that's nice. Now let's also change the state. We'll do this in the next lecture. In the last lecture, we executed switch name handler upon a click. Now we want to manipulate the state upon the click. So I'll comment out this console log statement and we could simply do this state, reaching out to this state property here. And as I mentioned, this will only work when using this syntax, otherwise this here will not refer to the class and will therefore not be able to reach that state property, but here it will work. So this state persons, then maybe access person one and set the name to Maximilian, my full name. Let's save this and let's see what happens if we execute this code. We already get a warning here, but let's ignore it for now and let's click switch name. Nothing changes, we still see Max here. Well, as I said, we do get a warning about this. We shouldn't mutate, which means change, the state directly like this. React will not recognize that and will not pick up this change. So don't do this. Instead, use a special method React gives you. You also access this with this and then it's set state. 
we haven't defined this method, but remember that we extend component. And this is made available by the React library. And the component object happens to have a set state method. This is a method which allows us to update this special state property here. And it will then ensure that React gets to know about this update and updates the DOM. Set state takes an object as an argument and it will merge whatever we define here with our existing state. So if I here set persons to an updated array, it will merge this with existing data. So if we had some other state here, which is some other value, then this would not get touched even if we only update persons. Not clear what I mean? Let me show you. I'm copying persons and I'm basically adding this as a property in the object I'm about to use as my update here. So I'm saying this set state and set state takes this new object where I update my persons, where I only change the first person or maybe also let's change Stephanie, let's change their age, uh, her age to 27. Now what it will do, what React will do for us is it will look at our state and see which part of it we're overriding, we're changing persons. It will not discard our state, but it will simply merge the old state with the new one. We'll override persons since we clearly define a new version of persons here, but we'll leave our state untouched because we're not saying anything about it here and it will not discard it, which of course is a good thing. You don't want to have to update everything about your state whenever you want to change only a tiny piece about it. So with that, let's now see what happens if we save this file. If we save it now and reload the app and I click switch name, watch max, and watch 26 years old down there. You see that? It's Maximilian and 27 years. Now the DOM was updated because React recognized that the state of our application changes. And this really is a special thing. There aren't many things which lead React to update the DOM. There actually only are two. Changing state and what else? You could already see it in action. Props. We change state, that's nice. But keep in mind, what we actually output for each person is defined in this person component. And there we don't use state. And as I said, we can't use it there because this uses this function syntax. Here we use props. And that's the other thing React watches out for. If state changes, or props changes, it basically analyzes the code it already rendered to the DOM and the code it would now render if it were to re-render everything. And then it updates the existing DOM in all the places where it needs to update it to reflect your new state and props. New state in app.js, new props in person.js. In the last lectures, we learned a lot about state and props. We learned that these are the only two things which lead React to update your DOM if something changed. Now, I also mentioned that when creating a component as a function, as we do for person, we can't use state in there because it's just a function where we return some JSX code. Granted, we could run our code before doing that. And you often do that if you need to transform your props first or something like that. But you can't set up a state property here. You can't call this set state because it's no class extending component. The set state method is not known and we don't have methods anyways. It's no class. It's a function. And still I mentioned that you should use this function form of components as often as possible. And I will emphasize it here one more time. Why is this so important? Because these Simple components, which are just functions receiving props, are very clear about what they do. They only render something to the DOM. They are dynamic because of props, and you can add some additional logic prior to calling return. 
But, and that's super important, they don't manipulate your application state. As your application grows, you will see that this is not so unimportant. This is actually really important. Most parts of your application shouldn't change the application state. They should just render something to the DOM. Dynamic, yes, but they shouldn't allow you to change your application state. Your application state should only be changed and handled in a few selected components, also referred to as containers. AppJS would be such a container. That's just another name. It is a component, but we refer to it as container because it contains some part of our application state. In our demo application, actually all of the application state. Here, we can change something about our app. And we, then we pass these changes down to, for example, the person component. But that's it. The change happens in AppJS. And once we start building the course project, you will see me use this pattern. I will have a few components where the state actually lives and gets changed. And a lot of components which take some inputs and then just render something to the screen, but which won't directly manipulate the state. Still, you might have cases where maybe you also want to listen to an event in the person component or in any other component. Now, of course, you could turn this into a component which extends component so that you can define methods which you execute. But maybe you want to listen to an event here, but execute some method in app.js so that you can keep that pattern of changing the name in app.js, but actually listening to the event in another component. Let's have a look at how we can handle this and change the state from another component in the next lecture. So let's say we want to call the switch name handler, which I recognized also changes the age, so maybe the name wasn't chosen perfectly. Let's say we want to call that not when clicking this button here, or not only when clicking this button, but also, let's say, when clicking any paragraph here, the paragraph which contain, contains name and age, inside a person component. Now for that, in the person component, we could add on click, but now what? We can't call that handler method, it's in a different file, in a different class. Well, we can actually pass a reference to this handler as a property to our component. And this is no fancy hack. This is actually a very common pattern. I will first of all restructure this over multiple lines for all these components so that we have an easier time seeing which properties we're passing. And then let's say I don't even want to pass this for all the components, but only for this usage of it. So here I will add a new property, which I'll name click. And the name is totally up to you. Here I will pass a reference to this switch name handler. So basically what I also did here, this switch name handler on the click on the button, here I'm passing it as a reference to this click property. And now we can use this click property in person JS. There I now can simply call props click because click is the name of the property I defined here. And this will execute this function which I pass as a reference. So if we save all the files, app.js and person.js, we should see that in our application, we can of course still click this button to change the name of Maximilian and the age of Stephanie. But if I reload again, we can also click this paragraph with menu here. You also see it changed the name and the years. This is something important to understand, an important pattern. You can pass methods also as props so that you can call a method which might change the state in another component which doesn't have direct access to the state and which shouldn't have direct access to the state. It's a common pattern and it's important to know. You can pass down click handlers which allow you to change the data in the parent component in the app component in this case, 
for the person component. Maybe we also want to pass a value to our function. Maybe here switch name handler should receive the new name. So that here where I hard coded Maximilian as the new name, I actually set name equal to new name. Now, how do we pass that data? There are two ways of doing that. The first is that you call bind. And here you may simply bind this. This controls what this inside the function will refer to. And by binding it to this here outside of the function, we're binding it to the class. It might look strange, but it's a typical way of handling the this issue in JavaScript. We wouldn't have need to do that though, but we can use this syntax because I also want to pass a second argument to bind. This now is a list of arguments actually, which will be passed into our function. And here, this should be the new name. So here, this could be Maximilian. And to really see a difference, let's copy that bind code. And let's also bind it down here when we pass the function as a reference to the click prop. And let's change this to max with an exclamation mark here so that we can see a difference depending on where we clicked. If we now save this with bind added and this received as an argument in the switch name handler, let's see what happens if I click switch name. I'm still changing it to Maximilian here, which makes sense because this is what I bound to, but that it works confirms that it works with receiving an argument. And if I click on the I menu paragraph, you see that it changed to max with an exclamation mark. So this is a way of passing an argument. It's not the only way though. I will leave one of the two code snippets here with bind to show you how this works. I'll also show you an alternative syntax though. So I'll leave bind here where we pass it as props, but we could use this new syntax I'm showing you now also down there. This new syntax looks different. Here on on click, I actually execute a arrow function, which takes no arguments, though theoretically it would receive an event object by the way, but I won't use that here. And then simply as a function body returns this function call. Now here are a couple of things you have to understand. First of all, when using an arrow function, this implicitly adds a return keyword in front of the code which comes directly after the arrow if it's all written in one line. The alternative is to wrap this in curly braces and write the normal function body. So this gets returned. And what I return is a function call. This is why I added the parentheses. Now in an earlier lecture, I said that you shouldn't call this and that was true. But here this is not getting executed immediately. Instead, what we pass here is an anonymous function, which will be executed on a click and which then returns the result of this function getting executed, which of course simply leads to this function getting executed. This is useful because now here we can easily pass our data. Maximilian with two exclamation marks maybe. If I now save this and I click switch name, we see Maximilian with two exclamation marks. Now this is a very convenient syntax, but it can be inefficient. React can re-render certain things in your app too often. So I don't necessarily recommend using this if you don't have to. Use the bind syntax instead if you can. Still, I'll leave it here. You may use it and depending on the size of your application, you also might not feel that big of a performance hit, but be aware that this can be inefficient. We covered a lot and we changed a lot of names here, but what if we actually want to change the name on our own? So let's say that in the person component here, we actually also have another element, a normal input element, which is of type text, and that's it. Should be self-closing. Now, whenever we type something there, we wanna use what we type here as a new name. Now, for that, we can listen to a special event on change. 
on change will be fired whenever the value in this input changes. And here I then want to execute some method which I need to pass down from my app.js file. We got that switch name handler and I will leave it as it is and instead add a new handler. I'll name it name changed handler. I expect to get an event object here. We haven't used that before. But in there, I still want to change the state. Now, of course, theoretically, you would want to change the state or the name of the person for which we type this. This is something we'll do later in the course once we learned how to correctly render a list of dynamic elements. So for now, I will always change the name of menu here. So Max will stay Max and Man and Stephanie should keep her age of 26 maybe even, but menu should change its name, no matter in which instance of this person component I type. Again, this is something we will fix later. So here I will get an event and as you might know for JavaScript events, this event probably has a target. The target doesn't make for a good name value though, but the target should be the input into which we typed. So it should actually also have a value property, which is the value the user entered. And therefore this now makes for a good updated value for name. So event target value is what I want to assign as a new name for manual, again for the time being, no matter into which input of which component I typed. Name changed handler is my handler. Now I need to pass this to a component to be able to access it from there. And since I only can change menu, I will only pass it to the menu person, though we could pass it to any other, of course. Here I will simply name this changed and pass this name changed handler, following the same logic as for the click event. Inside the person, I can now access this changed property and simply call props changed here. Or not call it, don't add parentheses, but simply pass the reference to it. And keep in mind, this refers to the method we declared in app.js, this name changed handler. The event object will actually be passed to it automatically by React, like a normal JavaScript where you also by default get access to the event object. With that, let's save this and let's see what happens. We got inputs below all components, but for most of them, nothing happens if I type in them. For a menu though, you see with every keystroke, the name updates, manual, whatever I want to type there. This is because we bound on change to this prop changed, which holds a reference to the name changed handler. And we then use this default event object to extract the target, which is the input element, and then the value of the target, which is what we entered. This shows us actually two things, how we can dynamically update something, dynamically call an event and use the things we learned before, like passing down event references or method references, I should say. But it also shows us how we can handle inputs. Now, it would also be nice if we would see the current value of the name in the input right from the start. So we basically want to set up two-way binding. When we change it, we want to propagate that change so that we can update the state. But we also want to see the current state right from the start. To do this, I can set value equal to props name. This is the name after all. And now we have our own two-way binding set up. We listen to changes, call the changed method in the end, which refers to the name changed handler, which ups updates the state, and we pass down the state to the person with name and age, and we output the name as the value of the input. This now allows us to show that value right from the start. And here I actually get a warning. This warning theoretically makes sense because if you provide a value prop without an on-change handler here, you actually run into problems 
because you're binding the value to a property without allowing yourself to react to changes. Hence, you would lock your input down. I can show this if I remove on change. Now you see, we still see the values, but if I type there, nothing happens. I can't type because we're not handling changes. So we always override whatever we try to type with the existing name prop. If I reintroduce on change though, the error stays here, which is simply a false alarm. As you can clearly see, I can type because I am hand able to handle my changes, update my state, update my props, and hence reflect my changes in the input here too. So we got a working two-way binding and we're able to change that name dynamically now. Again, keep in mind only for manual because we haven't set up the logic for the other inputs, hence we can't type there because we can't update these names there. And that is probably why it's complaining here for these other inputs. For now, we can ignore this though. We will improve this once we have a better way of dynamically rendering a list of elements.